I'm Judy Zelina. This is the Meal Cook Government Channel. When it comes to type 2 diabetes, the most common type of diabetes, prevention is a big deal. It's especially important to make diabetes prevention a priority if you're at increased risk of diabetes, such as if you're overweight or you have family history of the disease. It's never too late to start. Making a few simple changes in your lifestyle now may help you avoid the serious health complications of diabetes down the road such as nerve, kidney, and heart damage. Joining us on the program today to talk about diabetes and how the Sight Center has started programs that are really working with people with diabetes in our community is Alana Kunick, and Alana is the Prevention Service Coordinator at the Sight Center. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's always exciting to hear new things that you guys have going on, yes. and also the partnership that you have bringing diabetes right into the site center. Yes. Um, some people are confused. You know, we've been offering this national diabetes program to the Erie community since March of 2017, and we've received a lot of questions. Well, why? Why diabetes prevention here at the site center? But what people don't know is diabetes is one of the country's leading causes of vision loss amongst all age groups. So, um, and it comes in the form of diabetic retinopathy. So diabetic retinopathy can be treated to kind of um, help the eye disease, but it cannot be cured, and eventually it can be it can cause complete and total vision loss. So that's why when the directors and our executive director um, heard about this program, they knew that it was something they really wanted to bring in house and be able to align with our mission of preventing di I'm sorry, preventing blindness. Lana, how did it happen that the Sight Center started taking on these programs? with diabetes? Um, actually, in 2014, the Erie County Diabetes Association started this program. It was the only program that focused on prevention in Erie County. Um, unfortunately, in 2016, the Erie County Diabetes Association had to close its doors. Um, and with the site center being around for 80 years, they offered to take us on because of the reason I told you, you right. know, di with the diabetic retinopathy and the prevention aspect. So thankfully they, they took on the diabetes prevention program and we've now been serving the community since 2017 under the Sight Center's umbrella. Um, the Sight Center, do you just cover um, Erie County? Well, the Sight Center actually covers seven counties, but right now we're only we're only covering Erie County for our diabetes prevention okay. program, but all we right. have really big plans. We want to branch out to all of our counties and bring prevention to those outlying counties as well. Well, I know any of the programs that you have done in the past that yeah. I spoke with you, they have just been absolutely wonderful and such a success. That's why I'm excited yes. to learn more about this, pro this program that you have in place now. Thank you. I'm really proud of the program. Um, so far, I'll just give you some, some details about what we have going on exactly. with the Diabetes Good. Prevention Good. Program. Mm -hmm. um, we've so far, since we started in March of 2017, we've graduated 50, a little over 50 participants. Um, and we have 100 participants enrolled, over 100 participants enrolled. In that 50 that have graduated the year-long lifestyle intervention program, we've seen significant weight loss. We have seen um, strides towards increasing physical activity. There's reports of doctors taking these their patients off of blood pressure medication, off of cholesterol medication, all due to the fact that they have incorporated um, weight loss and exercise into their daily routines. So to me, that's that's huge, that weight loss and exercise can get you off of a lifelong med, a med that you're supposedly um, going to be on the rest of your life. Another little fun fact is every pound that you lose is takes about seven pounds of pressure off your joints. So a lot of our participants come in complaining of knee pain, ankle pain, pain in their joints. They're seeing they're losing 10, 20, 30 pounds and they're feeling that pain alleviate and feel better and it's such motivation for them to keep moving on in the program. So basically you're not helping, you're not only helping them with diabetes and other uh, medications or uh, health issues they have. Yes. You are giving them a whole lifestyle change, aren't you? Absolutely, yes, for sure. And you said you've had 50 graduates so far? Yes, a little over 50 graduates. And I had said 100 plus enrolled, which we're super proud of that number, mm -hmm. but statistics show that 25,000 Erie Community 
um, members have prediabetes and don't know it. Um, well, 10% don't know it. So to me, yes, I'm proud of 100 plus, but we're just scratching the surface and we really the site center is really raising awareness, letting people know if you're at risk or not by hooking up with medical facilities, um, registering for health and wellness fairs where we just give out a simple two minute risk assessment test to let that person know, hey, you're at risk. And then we encourage that person, go to your doctor, ask them for a blood draw, see what your numbers are. And the reason being is you don't just know your number, you can know your number and do something about it. You don't have to cross over until that into that type 2 diabetes range. There are steps you can take to help keep you in the, the normal range. And I think that's so important for, yes. pe for people to know. Um, we're talking about prediabetes. Mm -hmm. And people may wonder, how would they know if, if there would be a chance that they have prediabetes? Are there any symptoms, any signs? Lana? What should they look for? and then give you a call. Okay, well, as far as physical symptoms, a lot of the times if you're starting to feel those physical symptoms, blurred vision, extreme thirst, a lot of the times you may have already crossed over into that diabetic okay. range. Mm -hmm. But if you know that your, your BMI is above 25, meaning your weight is elevated, you get little to no exercise, if you have a mother, father, brother, sister with diabetes, these are all, all very strong indicators that you could be at risk. So really you're more looking at risks. There's a risk that you may be. By the yes. time you're feeling symptoms, it might, be too, late. It might be too late. Yes, exactly. Okay. I want to mention before we get too far, you have uh, received some recogni recognition lately, haven't you, in this program? Yes, we have. Um, we actually, in April of 2017, we received full recognition. Um, we are we were the only site in Western Pennsylvania to receive this, this recognition, so we're very, very proud. And it was, now, it, it was you were explaining to me something about the Medicare. Right, for full recognition, I'll just tell you how we received it. What did we do so that we received Thank it? Thank you, you're because you're I welcome. know the end result, but I yes, don't know how exactly. you got there. So there were some steps that led to it. All of our participants' data is entered to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Okay. So we're entering data about weight loss, class attendance, physical activity minutes. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, reviewed our data and and have determined that we are implementing an effective diabetes prevention program because we are meeting all requirements that they have set forth for their program. The fact that we are full recognition now is super exciting because we can serve more of the community because now insurances are getting on board and they're actually starting to cover preventative services, which is very, very, very exciting to us. And what does it mean that you are a Medicare diabetes prevention supplier? What exactly right. is First, that? First, yeah, we are the only Medicare diabetes prevention provider so far in... The only, okay, that's yeah, important. Yeah, that's one of our, our big accomplishments. And what that means is we are Medicare compliant, um, and if you're 65 or older and you have Medicare Part B or Medicare Advantage, you can enroll in our program and your your program fees will be covered by your insurance, which is huge. And they also, yes. a Medicare... Um, consumer gets two years of the program. So the program's normally 12 months, but as long as that person is meeting their goals, Medicare will pay for an additional 12 months of programming. Okay, now in this program, all right, say I've signed up for it, mm -hmm. what am I gonna have to do? What exactly are the steps? Um, you know, how are you going to be able to help me? I know I'm gonna be helped at the end. Right. But what are some of the steps that you're gonna take me through to get me? To, to First, there. we assess what you need. Okay. You come in, you have an initial weigh-in, and that's your baseline, your starting point. Then I work with you, or we work with you to set a goal for yourself. And it's normally, the, the initial goal is 7% of your starting body weight is what we're reaching for. And we only focus on that number because that's the really, only the real indicator I have that it's working. But we're also looking at your, your panel, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and all of that. Um, and every group that you come, we build on that goal. You learn how to prep, how to shop on a budget. Why are you overeating? What causes you to overeat? Is it boredom? Is it emotional eating? And we really touch on these subjects and make you come up with a plan of how you're gonna work around this obstacle. So it's really a network of support, but it's also you're, you're gaining the tools you need to not just be on a diet, but to live healthfully the rest of your life. Now, to get more information or to even come in and talk about this, this uh, 
a risk test. You mentioned a mm -hmm. risk test mm -hmm. earlier. Is there a charge on that? Is there, or is this something I can just call or walk in and you'd be able to help me with? Sure, good question. Um, you can call us at the site center and I believe the number will be on the screen at the end of the program. And you can ask for really anyone in office and we'll administer a risk test free of charge. And it will tell you if you are at risk or not. Um, you can go on our website and click the link for diabetes prevention. Our risk assessment is right online. Um, if your doctor's told you you're pre-diabetic, right away you're eligible for the program. If you know by blood draw that you are pre-diabetic, then you are eligible to join the program. Um, and we also offer a session zero. It's a free of charge uh, class. And anyone interested and eligible will join the class and get more information about what to expect and see if you're ready to commit. It's called session zero? Session zero, yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I've gone and I've done blood draw. Okay. And um, I've asked for my, my results, mm -hmm. which I know Judy Halcom, we not you and I both work with her, would tell us to do. She's a huge advocate of that, <laughs> yes, for sure. Okay, and I'm looking at my number. My doctor hasn't told me mm -hmm. I'm, I have prediabetes or anything. Mm -hmm. What numbers should I, if, if my... Um, A1C. Your A1C, mm -hmm. what should I be worried about? Five seven to six four puts you in the pre-diabetes okay. range. Mm -hmm. So if you get it back and it's five seven, yes, you're just a little above the normal range, but it's still time for you to start taking those steps to change your diet and move your body because every year it will just continue to tick up until eventually it could have gone too far and being six five or above. Okay. What if I'm just getting some blood work done and, okay. and my glucose? The Fasting, if you go fasting, okay. you want, if your numbers are 110 to 125, that's pre-diabetics. You want okay. to keep it under 110. And if you do a, um, an oral test, it's 140 to 199. What is an oral test? The oral glucose, it's when you drink the sugary drink. Okay. It's that thick orange drink that nobody really likes. And, <laughs> and they watch you to see how your body produces insulin if oh, it brings those okay. sugar levels down. Okay. So 140 to 199 okay. is pre-diabetic. I have never had that test. And okay. Now that you've warned me, if I'm ever told that I have to have it, I'm going to know it's going to be it's an very, awful drink. Very sweet. Very sweet. <laughs> yes. Um, Lana, this is really, really good information. And again, but I do want to stress, too, that some of our viewers... Maybe, maybe they have been di diagnosed with prediabetes. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this in previous shows, the denial. It's like, well, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if I don't have that extra milkshake, I'm going to be okay and it's going to bring it down. Right. What, would you, what, would you, what advice would you give to our viewers, somebody that's sitting and watching right now, they've been diagnosed, and they're kind of in denial about mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. about making any changes? What, would you, what would advice would you give to them? I would first of all tell them not to be ashamed, that we all, most people do um, have a little weight to lose and need to move a little bit more. Um, and I would also tell them that there's so little you can control in your life. But what you eat and how much you move your body are just two of those things you can control. So take control. You know, find a program such as the, the program we offer at the site center and learn how to take control, hit goals, meet goals, and go to your doctor the next time and have them say, you know what, you're not pre-diabetic anymore. You're in the normal range and be extremely proud of yourself because it's not easy, but it's 100% possible. And you're right, it isn't easy. Mm -hmm. And I also want to stress too, like you were, you were saying, um, you know, about um, when people are diagnosed with pre-diabetes, right away they think, oh, I'm overweight and lazy. Right. That's not it. Sometimes you've got genetic factors involved. Absolutely. A family history of mm -hmm. it. Um, a family history of heart issues too. Yes. Different things that can be bringing this on. Absolutely. Because I know people that are not all that overweight and they've been diagnosed with um, with diabetes. That is true and it is definitely false that you have to be overweight and exactly. not get any exercise. And, and I think that's where the reservations come in where people like you were saying feel a little ashamed or that they right. have prediabetes. But in all reality 25, a BMI of 25 is all that you um, need to have to be eligible for this lifestyle intervention program and that that BMI is one point above normal range So you don't have to have 60 pounds to lose in order to benefit from a prevention program And you don't have to have 60 pounds to lose to be pre-diabetic So keep that in mind mm -hmm. the uncontrollable factors definitely do play a role mm -hmm. Now the site center too. I just want to touch base just a little bit on um this diabetes program is absolutely phenomenal. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about it, but um, I want to 
touch briefly. You have a couple. You have other programs at the site center too we do. That, that our viewers could be yes. um, could benefit from. Correct. Yes, we we our motto is "Know us before you need us." So a lot of people don't know that we're this little gem, in my opinion, um, located on West Twenty Sixth Street. We have rehabilitation services for people who are low or no vision. We have a door to door transportation service. So, you know, someone who's blind, yes they can ride the city bus or they could call an Uber to come pick them up, but we actually have qualified individuals that walk to their door, help them put their jackets on when it's cold and rainy out, walk them to the car, help assist them in the grocery store. Um, to me, that's one of our, my favorite programs because if myself or someone I loved had vision loss, I would want that kind of care given to that individual. We also have occupational therapy to help people live a higher quality life, being able to do things on their own without vision or with low vision, and we have a low vision clinic. So we have a lot that we have going on at the site center. Yes, you do. And um, your, your main goal with this diabetes now is because you had mentioned vision mm -hmm. can become a problem Absolutely. with diabetes, mm -hmm. uncontrolled yes. diabetes. Yes. And you want to get it controlled so they don't end up with these extreme problems, correct? Correct. And if someone does if you are told, you know, you have diabetic retinopathy, a lot of the times that's because your blood sugars are out of control. But still, even though you are diabetic, you can benefit from maintaining a healthy weight and moving your body, and you can help further damage, prevent further damage to your eyes. Okay, now if, um, uh, how can somebody just, just call the site center to get more information on what we've been talking about here. Yes, everyone at the site center is well versed on what we do, who we can help, and how we can help them. So just call us, tell us the topic you want to know about, and we'll direct you to direct you to the proper person. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the risk factors too. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of jumping around, but That's okay. I was thinking about risk factors. We talked about um, overweight and. Um, maybe non-exercise, mm -hmm. but there are other risk factors too Absolutely. that can contribute yes. to pre-diabetes, am I correct? Yes, family history, that's, that's a big one. If you have a mother, father, brother, or sister who has been told they're diabetic, that puts you at greater risk. If you're a woman that's had a child weighing over nine pounds at birth, or all have been told you had gestational diabetes, that's put you at higher risk, and certain ethnic groups are at higher risk for oh, developing the disease. I, I guess I didn't realize that. Yes. And someone was telling me that um, sleep, good sleep habits, make, can, can help with diabetes. Absolutely. Um, I think you, you may have felt it in your own life, but lack of sleep can cause a slew of health problems, um, but also can cause weight gain. If you're not getting enough sleep, your body produces a hormone that can cause you to gain weight. It can cause your stress levels to rise. So all in all, it's affecting your, your heart, your blood sugars, and, and all of that. For sure. Well, then, then you have to start doing some meditation or something yes, to, go, to get a good absolutely. night's sleep. Yes. But there are a lot of different risk factors, and I think that's what I wanted to point out mm -hmm. that it's not just one or two little things that they have to worry about. Right. You know, because, like I said, if he says, well, I'm not overweight and mm -hmm. I don't exercise, but I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. it because I'm not overweight, that's not the only risk factor. Absolutely. And another thing for people to, to think of is, you know, have you ever known someone that can eat anything they want and they don't gain a pound? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. You, you want to smack that person. Of course you do. <laughs> but they, they're not showing it on the outside, but their insides are still being effective, affected. So that is something, too. If someone, you know, who's a healthy weight is told they're pre-diabetic, it's hard for them to, to grasp because, you know, I'm, I'm a fine weight and I move my body, but it's how you feel your body that can affect those numbers as well. I think this program is so wonderful, this education program that you have, that you're working with people, because there is so much to learn. Yes. There is, like you said, learning how to shop. Yes. And labels, reading labels, That's Lana. a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a huge one. Because people may look at sugars, but they don't realize the carbs affect it. Mm -hmm. Uh, see, Judy has taught me, when she's watching this show, she's going to be very proud. That you've all, retained all this. Yes. 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 But those, that all comes into play. Yeah. And with the Erie County Diabetes Association no longer around, I am so glad that you guys have uh, come to the plate and are offering so much to our residents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy as well. And again, Lana, if people need more information or they want to take the risk assessment mm -hmm. test, 
How can they get a hold of you guys? You can call the site center at 814-455-0995 and you can ask for Lana Kunick. I am the prevention service coordinator, um, but really anyone in office can give you that risk assessment. You can go to our website, which will be listed at the end of the mm -hmm. show, Correct. and click on the diabetes prevention tab and our risk assessment is right online. Um, or you can just call and let me know that your doctor has given you results that you are pre-diabetic and we'll set you up with a session zero where you can come in, hear more about the program and, and register for a site that works for you and a day and time that works for you. Lana, this is wonderful. It really is. I'm so glad that uh, all of you guys at the Site Center have come together be because to me, I think it's so important to get the word out um, about prevention. I think that's, that's the, the, the tip of the iceberg right there is prevention. Yeah, absolutely. But even if you are diagnosed, again, it comes into play that you're there to help them and work with them also. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we didn't touch on um, since we're getting at the end of the program here sure. that you wanted to cover with our viewers? Well, you did great on hitting all the topics that I'm, I was really wanting to get out there. There is one more program that the site center is kind of debuting. Um, we've had so many doctor's referrals and people coming through our office who are diabetic, but they aren't eligible for this prevention program and we did not want to see these people fall through the cracks because we knew that they could benefit from healthful living. Right. So we um, at the site center are embarking on an initiative to offer programs to help people identify how they can get healthy and we call it healthful living. It's a two-part series um, and if you are interested in hearing more about that there'll be a flyer that is shown at the end of the program with all of our contact information and you can get a hold of us and we'll tell you how to be a part of that healthful living movement. And then, Lana, as you were talking, I was just thinking, too, um, volunteers are a big part of your program, yes. aren't they? Yes, absolutely. So if someone was interested even in volunteering mm -hmm. to give a call, you'd find a place for them, wouldn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Different times of year are busier, and we are in need of more volunteers, but let's get you on the, on the list. And when you know, if our kids' summer camp comes up, if you want to come and help children without vision canoe or mm -hmm. uh, you know, do anything like that down at the peninsula, we'll be able to give you a call and hook that up. And also fundraisers. You have annual fundraisers, don't you? We do. Our, our next big fundraiser that I have in mind is February 22nd. It's our Margaritaville fundraiser. And that's an annual one. Yes, it's it? our annual mm -hmm. fundraiser, one of our annual fundraisers. So um, you're going to be hearing about that on the radio. We have billboards up. It's a really, really fun event for you to get out at the end of winter and listen to some Jimmy Buffett and <laughs> kind of get out there and support the site center and our mission. Lana, thank you so much for joining us on the program. You've got a ton of information. Again, thank you, thank you, and the Site Center for um, working with people with diabetes and getting, some, getting the education out there for them. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for helping me get the word out. Viewers, again, if you have any questions, feel free to give them a call. Check out their website. They also have a Facebook page um, that has all current information on different happenings at the Site Center. So viewers, thank you again for tuning into the Milker Government Channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day.